Firewire connected DV cameras. Firewire driver. DCR TVR20. Compensation. The Magneto Reluctant. 411 Chroma Subsample. Prefamulated Amulite. Where do I even get started? Capturing footage from old tapes is intimidating when you first start. While there's a wealth of knowledge about this subject on the internet, it comes in the form of hyper-detailed, very technical, long-form content. 12 millimeter slices. My goal is to simplify the steps into every man's speak so that you can get started. Then once you've captured your first tape, you will have the experience, confidence, and basic knowledge to watch an hour-long video from EpostVox and know what he is talking about. The HDV tapes are usually 422 chroma sampling. His video is where I learned. It's by far the best one-stop shop to get the knowledge to capture tapes. If you are already pretty confident that you can understand the technical jargon, retro encabulator. I suggest you skip my video and go straight to his. This video is going to be for beginners. Let's start with what you're going to need. You're going to need hardware, software, and footage. The hardware you need is a tape player, a cable to plug that tape player into your computer, and a computer with a compatible port. If your computer doesn't have this port, then you're going to need an adapter card with that port on it. The software you're going to need is the driver for the adapter card, and you will need a program that can record the tape into a digital video file. The last thing you're gonna need is the footage on the tapes. You need a way to read the footage on the tape. You can either buy a professional tape deck, these run for about a grand on eBay, or you can buy a camcorder. These are much cheaper, but you need to buy a model with a Firewire port. Firewire is the easiest, highest quality, fastest and cheapest way to read the footage on your tape. But first we need to figure out what kind of tape you have. My mom had Hi8 tapes, which is a Sony format. You probably have Mini DV, which is a more universal format, widely adopted, cheaper, higher quality video, smaller tapes, better in every way than Sony's Hi8. Canon made a lot of Mini DV camcorders with Firewire and they can be found on eBay between 30 and $50. Make sure you get one with a power supply. The power supplies were proprietary. They are no longer manufactured. They are hard to find now. The PSU is worth more than the camera. You will also want a battery. Believe me, it's a convenience to have a working battery. You can buy a camera that is broken to get it cheaper. Remember, you only need the tape player and the fire wire to work. The screen can be broken, the lens can be broken, the camera might not be able to record video anymore. Doesn't matter. It just needs to play a tape. You can save a lot if you buy a broken camera. For my mother's Hi8 tapes, I used the Sony DVR TRV730, and it worked great. You will need a cable to plug your camcorder into your computer. You might think that a USB cable is the way to do that. The camcorder you have probably has a USB port. Without getting too deep into it, it took a global pandemic for Canon and Sony to realize that transferring footage over USB is a convenience. Your early 2000s camcorder has a different port on it called Firewire. This has a better protocol than USB, but no one cares. All you need to care about is the name of the cable you need to buy. You're looking for a Firewire 400 1394 4-pin four to 6-pin cable. This is what it looks like. Your camcorder needs to have a 4-pin Firewire port. The cable needs to have 4-pin on one end and 6-pin on the other end. In order to plug this cable into your computer, you will need a Firewire 400 6-pin port. Now maybe you have a Mac from the early 2000s that has a Firewire 800 9 pin or a 400 6 pin port. In that case, this is likely your easiest and cheapest option. Check your older hardware to see if you've already got Firewire. My MacBook had a Firewire 800 9 pin 1394B port. I ordered a nine pin to four pin cable, plugged the camcorder in, turned it on, opened the software in Mac OS. I hit record in the software. The camcorder started playing the tape without playing audio out loud, which was nice. And everything just worked. I recommend this workflow, even though the software is expensive, 
because it is dead simple. I would have kept using this workflow had the SSD not died in my Mac. I still need to make a video about what happened. Maybe you need to use a Windows 10 PC like me. You will need to buy a Firewire add-in PCIe adapter card. There's a detailed article about which card to buy. In short, you will want a Firewire 1394A 400 six pin card with a VIA chipset, VIA. The VIA chipset is older and far more compatible with the vast majority of Firewire 1394 devices, such as this Canon camcorder. The VIA is older than what you ask? It's older than the Texas Instrument chipset. The TI Firewire 1394B 800 nine pin card is far more popular in search results despite being less backwards compatible. So before you buy, you want to check the photos of the product and the description. Brand name doesn't really matter in this case because the performance is limited by the chipset. Most brands advertise far more performance than the chipset is capable, placing multiple Firewire ports on a single card which is convenient when you have multiple devices to plug in, but please understand that you won't be able to get more than 400 megabits per second, and you will have to share that speed between your devices. This doesn't matter for our use case because we can only capture one tape at a time. We will only have one camera plugged in at once. Now I have bought two Firewire cards, a Texas Instrument and a Via. My Sony Hi8 camcorder worked with the Texas Instrument card, but the Canon Mini DV camcorder only worked with the Via card. The Via card was cheaper, so I suggest you save some money and purchase the card that will work with all your devices. But you have to make that decision for yourself based on the camcorder that you have. As far as how powerful your computer needs to be, digitizing tape footage is not a very intense task. Mini DV is capable of full HD footage, while Hi8 tapes are only 480 resolution. And since you are recording at real-time playback speed, the data is a slow trickle into your computer. My 2011 MacBook was capable of recording full HD Mini DV footage without maxing out the processor. The spec that you need to be worried about is the storage capacity. Each tape is going to take about 25 gigabytes of space. My mom has around 50 tapes. That's well over a terabyte of space. Now you're going to want to split and transcode these files to make them easier to play back. You're going to need to double that space since you will be creating a copy of each tape. I'm planning on three terabytes for my mom's 50 tapes. I've already created 400 gigabytes after digitizing nine tapes. You need to count how many tapes you have and multiply by 50 gigabytes. Then you will know how large of a drive that you'll need to purchase. Windows 10 doesn't come with FireWire drivers. Mac OS 10 does come with FireWire drivers pre-installed. Actually, Windows 10 does have FireWire drivers. However, they are not the legacy drivers that will be compatible with the older camcorders, such as what we're working with. Download the drivers here, install them, and restart your computer. Check Device Manager to verify that the drivers are installed. Plug in your camcorder, turn it on, and check Device Manager to see if it shows up. It might be under Imaging Devices. This may not work automatically. For example, if you're using a FireWire port that is built into the motherboard, then go into the system BIOS and look for a setting that says something about FireWire port or IEE 1994 port. You will need to make sure that this setting is set to enable or on. If you're using a 1394 FireWire expansion card, then you will need to go into the BIOS and set it to disable or off. Save your BIOS settings and reboot into Windows 10. Once again, if if you're needing details on this process, there is a great article that I will link to. It details the differences between Windows 7, 8, 10, and 11. The process is different for each generation of Windows. Once you've got your FireWire card installed, your drivers installed, and your camcorder plugged in, and everything is showing up in Device Manager, download WinD from here, extract the files, and open the executable. Once you have all the pieces, 
The rest is easy, fun even, especially if you haven't seen your tapes in a while. I hadn't seen my mom's tapes in over a decade. I had fun seeing my older siblings as little kids. First thing you need to do is place your tape in the camcorder and play. You need to make sure the camcorder works and the tape isn't damaged. Quite a lot of my mom's tapes were moldy or ripped or warped. Next, you need to plug the camcorder in using the firewire cable. This can be the trickiest part and sometimes it will just work. I had to turn on the computer, plug in the firewire cable, turn on the camera, then open the capture software in that order. Once you get WinDV open, the source should say Microsoft DV camera and VCR. If you change the source to the Canon camera or Sony camera, it just won't work. It has to be the Microsoft Firewire driver. The next thing is to press capture in WinDV. Some cameras can be controlled over Firewire. If your camera cannot be played from WinDV, then press play on the camcorder. You want the tape to play until it gets to the first frame of the video, then start recording in WinDV. If you start recording from the beginning of the tape, the audio will disappear from the AVI file you're creating when you go to split it up into shorter clips later. You want the WinDV recording to start at or after the first frame of the video that appears on the tape. Then you just have to let it record. When the tape is done, stop the recording in WinDV, and there you have it. You now have your tape in an AVI file on your computer. Now these files are not easy to play back. Windows Media Player cannot play AVI files smoothly. In another video, we'll talk about converting, compressing, and splitting these files into smaller files to make them easier to work with. For now, I'd suggest installing VLC on your computer. That is a video and audio player that is highly compatible with most media files. VLC will be able to play your AVI files so that you can check them, make sure that they look okay, and of course, enjoy them. In the future, I'd like to talk about deinterlacing, upscaling, sharpening, color grading, denoise. There's some really amazing artificial intelligence softwares that can do amazing things with these old tape videos. For now, tell me in the comments how recording your first tape went. I'll see you there.